when you sign up for a movie like Spider-Man, you're essentially like signing up for the military, or it's like a jail sentence. wrapped up Spider-Man 1 like only a couple months prior and uh, I didn't think I was going, going to be coming out until maybe a month before uh, production but um, they shot some uh, background plates for the big train sequence in Chicago and um, it was just a huge mountain of footage you know hours and hours of uh, 35 millimeter and Vista and, and um, you know all, all kinds of different formats and he just really wanted to get a jump start on basically sort of um, assembling the scene, starting with the background plates and then incorporating, you know, previses and animatics and stuff that they had already done. Sam actually started planning the scenes even as we were finishing Spider-Man 1. He was gearing up. We, we hadn't had a script yet, but he knew of some certain set pieces that he wanted for the movie. So um, even at the point that I came on, there, were, there was already quite a you know, quite a few storyboards, hundreds of storyboards, and some some uh, some of the major shots had already been sort of pre-vised out in you know rough computer or uh, you know like animatic form. You know, taking the storyboards and like making moves on the boards. So the first thing I did was I took the scans of all the storyboards and everything else, and just basically started building the sequence together, as if it was um, working with dailies. And um, by the end of the first uh, couple of weeks I was on, I had like you know. A, 10 minute long sequence cut, which was like a full reel of the movie. That cut basically was used to try to figure out what we needed to, to do in terms of shooting. You know, it, it, it's crude, but you really get a feeling of, of how the scene is working and progressing. So you can do a lot of planning before, you know, like storyboards are for it, do kind of plan it on a paper before you actually commit to shooting things and, you know, and spending the money. And then, of course, then when you shoot it, a lot of things change and you can't be too slavish to the animatics or storyboards because you know the, the actors come up with stuff on the set or the stunt guys come up with different bits of business or of course Sam you know but it, it's just um, it's a good start for any scene. I've known Sam for years and you know we share a lot of the same tastes in terms of uh, a love of horror and a love of suspense and a love of you know making the audience jump and scream. <laughs> And just, um, you know, just a, a desire to sort of put on a good show for the kids. Part of the fun process of working on a movie like Spider-Man 2, or even Spider-Man 1, that there, it, it crosses so many genres that, you know, on one hand it's sort of a drama, and on the other hand it's a horror picture, and, you know, it's an action movie, and it's a comedy, and it's sort of every genre. Anybody here take shop class? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was nice about the... Uh, horror scene is, I think, that uh, the studio went for it, especially in a movie like Spider-Man, for it to take such a kind of a dark, gruesome turn. <laughs> and we were worried, of course, too, that it, it wouldn't get a PG-13, and, you know, there's no blood, but it's still pretty intense, you know. <laughs> And it's 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 cool to um, you know, be get, getting the bit first guy to see those dailies. You know, you get the dailies, and there's a lot of cool zoom shots on screaming faces, and uh, you know the old chainsaw coming up in the frame, and you know those kind of classic trademark Sam Raimi shots. So uh, you know it's 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 cool that uh, you know he's able to pull all that stuff together that he loves, and you know do it in a in a huge movie like this. <laughs> You always have to be aware of what you need to tell the story. I think it's, it's more important to um, that every shot in a sequence services the story and, 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 and tells the story to the, its best way possible. And um, sometimes they have a maximum amount of impact. The shots need to be short, and you know I don't really see it as a stylistic thing as much as just sort of figuring out what's best for that given moment of a scene, what'll give the shot the most impact or, or, or that part of the sequence. It's Keep, keeping the story moving and, and keeping everything super clear, crystal clear, within any given shadow moment. 
And then when you're in a dialogue scene, you know, I think the most important thing in a dialogue scene is uh, knowing when not to cut. I mean, the nice thing uh, when you're working with really great actors is you can stay on them, you know, and you can let, let a shot play out. I mean, there's a shot, uh, a scene in, in this movie where Toby's basically confessing that uh, he feels he's responsible for the, the death of Uncle Ben. And um, the, the, the shot of Toby Impress with his speech Jane. was most powerful without any cuts at all. It happened so fast. I won the money and the guy wouldn't pay me. Then he got robbed. The thief was running towards me. I could have stopped him, but I wanted revenge. I mean, there's, I think, one cutaway to Aunt May go. at a certain point in the scene, but otherwise it's just, you know, a minute of Toby just basically telling, telling the story. And it's, 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 um, it's nice when you can do that. And then you can just study the actor and the nuances of, of his emotion and performance. When I got in the footage for this uh, montage, which it, it comes at a point in the movie where, um, you know, Peter Parker has had so many bad things happen to him, and he's just so held down and so miserable for so long that he can't take it anymore. And finally, he just gives up being Spider-Man, and um, he, he's free and doesn't have any responsibilities and can just live life as a normal human. It was like the first piece of music I went to for whatever reason, and I, I cut it in. I put the scene together, and, and I did actually hadn't even didn't even really cut the scene to it. And I went home and got the CD. I thought I'm gonna put that rain drops keep falling on my head because it's just like the epitome of these kind of scenes. And <laughs> for some reason, it, it just really worked. You know, it's just it 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 caught all the cuts in some magical way. I mean, there were a couple of cuts that I needed to like adjust like a frame or two. But pr pretty much the, the version of that scene that's in the movie is like the very first cut of that scene. Sorry. And it feels like a, a, a huge amount of weight has been lifted off the character. And for the first time in his life since he's become Spider-Man, he's just truly free and, and has no worries in the world. I hope it's uh, going to be, uh, you know, introduced to a new generation of moviegoers who can be tortured by it as much as I was when I was a kid. Nothing's worrying me. Sam actually works, we work pretty closely together. And especially on, on a big effects movie like this, the, the sort of nightmare of it is that it never really ends. I mean, on most movies, the footage gets shot, and at that point you have a finite amount of material to work with, and you're sort of working with the same dailies over and over, just basically honing it down, trying to figure out the best takes and the best performances and, you know, the structure of the scenes. But when you're done shooting, you're far from done because there, there's so many visual effects shots that are constantly evolving and changing that um, every day we would have... Um, a two to three hour visual effects meeting at SPI, uh, Sony Picture Image Works, which is our effects company, where we would see anywhere from um, 20 to 60 shots, all in various states of completion, you know, from like rough early pre visits to beginnings of lighting and so on and so forth. So we were constantly having to give feedback on those shots. Every day was like getting new dailies. And then having to bring back those 20 to 60 shots, cut them into the movie, and see how they worked, you know, within within the material that we already had. It was incredibly important to have a, a good visual effects editor, and Jody Fidel, who I've known for years, is a fan of all this kind of stuff, and and is just somebody who who is, you know, totally in love with his work, and and obsesses over effects. Bob would be cutting, but you know, effects were always coming in, so I would have to put together a sequence. I'd take one of Bob's sequence, cut the newest shots, and go to set with the tape and uh, show it to set on Sam in between setups. He'd give notes, I'd take notes, I'd get them back to SPI and John Dykstra. And seeing if, if, if they worked okay or whether we needed something different, whether Spider-Man was too fast or the action was too slow or the framing was, was right, the movement within the shot to, to cut from, you know, shot number one, which was a shot we already had, and shot number three, which was a shot we already had, and this was the shot in the middle. It was uh, a great crew and, and everybody just really worked together and just cared about making the movie the best it could be. Surprisingly, there was very little footage that wasn't used. Um, there were just some, a few uh, dramatic scenes that we thought would be um, better shorter. A uh, scene in the backyard between Toby and, and uh, Kirsten, where they have sort of a rom romantic interchange that we always liked, but we felt it was 
within the it, within the pace of a summer action movie that it might be too much. So we pulled footage out of that, and and there are just a couple other scenes. There's another scene between um, Peter Parker and the Russian girl who lives next door, the girl Ursula. It's a scene I always liked, but um, it didn't really fit into the end of the movie. Woo! Woo! Whoa! In a movie like this, there's no corners cut in terms of you know getting what you need to do the job correctly, and then everybody sees it. So it's it's, it's really gratifying on, on that level, and just being being able to go to the theater when it, the movie opens and hearing the reaction of the audience which is, you know, kind of what it's all about, you know.